At Bianchi Honda, we want to exceed your expectations for customer service. From our gorgeous showroom and accommodating staff to our extraordinary selection of Honda vehicles and industry-leading service department. Your vehicle should be the best choice for you, and you can find it here at Bianchi Honda. I'm Jason Perico, and I promise to always make it worth a visit. Happy to welcome in Gannon women's basketball coach Jim Bernelli as we review last week, look ahead to this coming week. Coach, it's been a while. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me. How have you been? I'm very well. It's good to have you back. And uh, I know uh, Jimmy's very excited and Sean very excited about the year so far. You're, you're ranked highly in the region. You're, you're off to a great start, especially in the PSAC. Are you happy, um, pleased, okay? Where, where do you feel that your team is at right now here in the season as we get into mid-December? You know, I, I like where we're at right now better than last week because we were coming off uh, three games <laughs> losing, and now we're coming off three games winning over some very good teams. So, no, I like where our team's at. You know, I, I wish we wouldn't have gave away a couple games uh, early in the year. Uh, but I like our kids. Uh, they're a great group of young ladies. They get along very well. And i um, just excited about the potential they show every day in practice. And then you get to see, you know, we, we've been getting to see some, some really good pieces. Um, come together in these last couple games, and, and that makes it very, very exciting. One thing, uh, and, and I've, I've been doing uh, bearing games, and obviously the most noticeable difference, the quarters. How do you feel that you guys have adjusted, in, and I know you, I'm sure you've talked about this already, but do you like the change going to the four-quarter format? You know, I didn't, I, I really was indifferent coming into the season, and after the first couple scrimmages in our exhibition game, you know, it, it's like we've been, I feel like it's we've been doing it forever, and that's weird because, you know, I, this is my 18th year in this profession. This is the first year we've had quarters, and and uh, you know it it doesn't it doesn't seem weird anymore. Uh -huh. You know when they made the change over the summer and everybody was talking about it, they were like, "How's it going to be? How's it going to be?" And then I, I think our kids have adjusted really well. I like it. I, I like where we're at. I like how it's moving. I don't necessarily think that it's fast or anything like that, um, but. Hey, it is what it is. They're going to make the rules. We're just going to abide by them and play hard. Well, you've gotten not to great starts. I mean, you've really dominated for the most part those first quarters. So that's got to, you know, it's yeah. an adjustment. If you're if you're being outscored, you, know, you probably wouldn't like it as much. Exactly, exactly. I guess that's it. I, you know, I haven't even been looking at what our first quarter production is, second quarter. I'm just trying to get these get these young ladies better every day and and. Uh, you know, let you guys bring that stuff up. And then I'll be like, oh, okay, yeah, okay, we've been doing that. That sounds good. So you had the back-to-back -back over the weekend, the the travel, which uh, and you guys went down Thursday, is that correct? Yes, Thursday night. And you go to Lock Haven, and again, you get off to a great start. Morgan Neighbors, who's had a great year so far, has a huge game. Uh, what have you seen from her? You know, she started a few games last year. She played significantly. But what have you seen from her now this year, uh, really becoming, you know, one of the, the main leaders on this team? Yeah, you know, Morgan's done a great job for us this season. And, and, and you know, to go back, she, she's done a great job for us every year. Um, she's been here. But this year, you know, we've changed our offense a little bit. And, and I think it suits this team really, really well. And, um, you know, as 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 it gets going and, and as we're in, you know, we're, what are we, eight, seven and eight and three? What are we, eight and three? Are we eight and three? Seven and three. Seven and, seven and three. three. So we're seven and three. And, and as we get going in these games, we're starting to see – you know, the, the, the ladies are starting to see what what this offense can do, and it's opening things up for them. And, um, and she really took advantage against it that night at, at, uh, when we played IUP where she had 31. And, uh, you know, everybody's getting her open by attacking the basket, and they're finding her, and then she's just knocking down shots. So I'm really happy for her. She's been in a good... Uh, a good groove lately, and um, and when she's not hitting from outside, she's attacking the rim and either scoring or getting people open. So I uh, really like what she's been doing, and, and she's just really been busting her butt and, and putting in the extra time, and, and it's showing off. So now both these games over the weekend, they had kind of similar flow. You got off to a great start, and then the, the, the opposition, whether it was Lockhaven or Bloom, sort of worked their way back, and then you were able to dominate in the fourth quarter. Uh, what adjustments did you make uh, specifically in that game uh, against Bloomsburg, I mean, you just dominated that fourth quarter to, to sort of put them away. What were you talking about, uh, you know, maybe at the end of the third quarter that, that turned things around there? You know, it was just trying to find a right rhythm 
Um, I, I don't remember talking about anything different other than just trying to play good defense and, and, and get some quality shots. Um, even with our start in, in, in the first game there at, at, at Bloom, um, you know, we got off to a great start. We were, we were attacking the rim, and, and but our post players were struggling. We were getting good looks by them. They just weren't falling. And all of a sudden, a couple people hit some shots, got the ball rolling. And then I think I think what, what really separated us is we were limiting them to just one shot. Um, and if you look at the stats from that game, we out-rebounded them, and we just got everything there was. So we were limiting, the, we were limiting them um, with possessions, and then we were just attacking and everything we were putting up. Um, that stretch, I, I think Lenny Saunders started things off with a, with a hook shot and a jump shot, and then McKenna, and it just went bang, 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 and we were getting really good stops. And so it just snowballed for us, and, and the ladies were feeling really, really good about it. Yeah, and then I'm looking at the Bloomsburg game, 19 offensive rebounds. So not only were you limiting them to one shot, but you were able to get some extra opportunities, too, on the offensive end. Yeah, and that, that was the crazy thing because, you know, I thought we shot a really good percentage, you know, shooting 40, 43, 44% for the game. That's pretty good, but we were just attacking the rim, you know, and I, I was telling our team the other day, you know, when we're on offense, even though that ball's in the air, if after we shoot it, that's our ball still. So go after it if it, if it, if it, if it misses. And, you know, you have people like um, Jenny Tease grabbing five offensive rebounds. You have Amanda Birch told the smallest player on the court grabbing two. You got Morgan grabbing another three. And, uh, and Lenny Saunders grabbed two there offensive rebounds. So we really attacked it. And uh, I was just proud of the, their effort, their effort, because they didn't light up at all. Are the road back to back? So that are they always this early in the season, or is that just the way it turned up for you this year? And are you happy to have that out of the way now? You know, they are. They usually are. Um, the way they've moved the schedule around a little bit, and they'll be different next year. Um, but they always seem to, you know, come right into play. And, and our ladies are used to them. Um, you know, you just you, you just go and you have to you have to get it done. That's what it is. That's what they do. And you know, there's no complaining about it. It you, you got to play. And this one was a little bit different because the games in the beginning of the season were supposed to be 5:30 and 5:30, mm -hmm. but because of um, finals week on the eastern part of the state, they moved the games up to two. Okay. And so you know, it, it makes it interesting when you play a 5:30 game. You don't even have 24 hours right. recovery, and then you're there at 2 p.m. ready to start a game. But our ladies, I'll tell you what, we could play every game like that if the way our kids took off on it. So coming uh, on the second day of a back-to-back, -back, then you change your uh, you know, substituting philosophy at all? Do you try to go with more depth uh, you know, to keep the legs a little bit more fresh? You know, no, no, just going out and playing. Um, you know, we made some early subs just to try to get some of our post players in there um, to try to get something going. Because like I said, we started off the game, we had a lot of good looks, but nothing was falling, so I put in Put in Lenise and then put in Nicola Cava and then put in Lauren Lauren Tavis and, and just try to get a get that inside game established and then finally we got it going. But our our guards were just attacking the rim and, and knocking down shots. So so now you have speaking of the schedule, you have an extended layoff until the 60th, 16th is your next game uh, at Edinburgh. So it's sort of a road game, but not really. Right. Uh, is your practice schedule then changed? Is there anything you do differently to try to stay sharp over this period of time? How do you approach that? Well, like, like I told the team after our game in, in Bloom, you know, we have a long layoff, uh, but our, our goal is to get better. During those 10 days we have off, we're going to give them off. They were off yesterday, we're going to give them off another day this week just to kind of rest up a little bit. We have some kids that, you know, with this crazy weather we're having around here, some days it's cold, some days it's decent. Yeah. You know, the, um, the sickness has come in, but most of the time, uh, mo most of the team's doing really well. We've had some kids with some nagging injuries, so we'll get them. We're just keeping practice short you know, two hours and, and we'll get some lifts in there, um, getting a lot of shots up and, and just continuing to work on our offense and our defense so that we don't lose anything. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, I'll, we'll, we'll look at that game, although, uh, you know, we'll still have you here next week. But, uh, you know, Edinburgh obviously has become a great rivalry for you. So yeah. uh, is this something now that's that's been circled on your calendar since the start of the season, you know, you know sort of target that date? You know, no, I don't look at that. Um, it, it's one game at a time. And uh, we don't circle any any games ahead of time just because they're all important. You can't when you start preparing for one game. That's when you get a trap game and you, and you lose the focus with the team. So we just go one day at a time, one game at a time, and uh, that's about it. You know, I, I try not to get our kids to look ahead, and and we just try to focus on on the task at hand, and that's getting better every time we step on the court.
And that has to be why it's going to be so nice to get off to a good start in the piece set because you, you know it's such a it's an interesting league. I mean, if you if you drop a couple games here and there, you know you're sort of going upstream the whole rest of the year. So right. you've got to be fairly relieved then that you're off to such a good start in conference play. Oh yeah, you know every game we play means something. It's getting us ready. You know the non-conference games and, and the exhibition games and the scrimmages are getting ready for the start of the season. Every game has its place, but it is such a good start to have the kids focused and and. You know, we play conference games so early that you have right. to be mentally ready uh, to, to attack that because a lot of a lot of conferences, you know, out there, they're not playing conference games until maybe end of December right. or, or January. So we get a few in there, get some focus, get some ready to go. And then you always have, you mentioned the exhibition game, you always try to, you know, play a really good program. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of years ago, UConn, right? You right, UConn, that's correct. What is that... Um, what does that do for the team, other than just the, the bonding experience, playing a team uh, at the Division One level? You know, this past year, we went over to Dayton. They're coming off a, a wonderful year. They made it to the uh, Elite Eight last year. Right? Yeah, they led led by one. Um, and, uh, you know, it does a lot of things. Um, you know, the, the bonding thing, just the first road trip, get everybody together, get everybody focused, playing in an arena like that. A lot of family and friends come. But it's just a chance to... To, to pull from that experience throughout the season. Hey, you know, we competed, you know, with a team this half, we may have outscored it, we may have hit so many threes, you know, just type, I think it does more for us individually, because mm -hmm. I can revert back with players and say, hey, remember when you took so-and-so off the dribble or, or we ran this against 6'5", six, 6'4", six, hey, we're not dealing with that now. Let's, let's attack it the same way and we'll have the same results. Well, it's been a lot of fun now, rank fourth now in the Atlantic Poll, and I know you know you say you know the stats and everything, and but is that something that you're cognizant of at all? I mean, I'm sure Dan Teleski tells tell, will tell you, but uh, I mean, it's, it obviously feels good. But is that something that you, you were cognizant of, the team is, or you just trying to ignore all that? You know, with the way social media is today, <laughs> Dan and, and Alex, yeah, we went on the air yeah, there. they don't they don't force it down our throat. I see it on Twitter because I follow Gannon Knights right. and, and and the and and the sports you know department. But other than that. You know, we know that the main rankings uh, in the region come out in, you know, what is it, February. Um, and those are the ones that, that really, really mean something. Right. Is it great that we're getting recognized? Absolutely. It's always great. Um, it, it gives, it boosts our players individually and as a team. Um, but is it something that we focus on? I know I don't as a coach. Um, it's always nice to get good publicity um, and, and be recognized for things like that. But we're, we're not in it for that. We're in it to go out and compete every day and try to win a championship. And um, it's, But it is good to have people uh, notice you. And uh, we're just trying to stay focused, worrying about these this next week and getting ready for finals and, and finishing strong in the classroom and then staying healthy. There's a lot. We're, we're, we're like the plate spinner at the at the circus, you know. You're, you're over here, you're spinning over here, and one starts to wobble, you go over there. So we're just trying to get everything finely tuned. I never knew how they were able to do that. So what is the schedule then? Is this the final week of classes then? Finals are next week? Is that how it goes? That's correct. For for us, for us, everybody else that I know of are in finals week this week. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a couple schools, and I believe we're, we're one of the few ones that, that we don't start finals until the following week. So we'll play a game during finals week uh -huh. and so this week uh, no games for us and uh, we're just gonna practice get better each time we step on the court and and the kids are gonna you know you can tell when finals week starts to roll around because kids are coming in in the morning with you know they're getting ready to put on their shoes and they have their little study their little study sheets right. and going over things and, and it's good to see because these, these ladies are truly student-athletes um, they put as much effort in the classroom as they do in the court and, and and it shows it shows is it unusual to have a game during finals week not since i've been here every other place <laughs> every other place it is unusual you you normally don't get to play until you know maybe like a thursday or a friday night or a saturday right. but here every year since i've been here we've always played at least one game and this year it's only one in the over the past this is when we would have our crossover games we'd play a tuesday wednesday we'd play two games normally but they moved it around a little bit so we play one on Wednesday and then we get one on Saturday. So it is, it is a little usual, unusual for us. Um, but since I've been here, it's been the norm to Talk play again. the positives, the rebounding as you now go into this layoff, is there anything <coughs> that you'll specifically be working on in practice, one area of improvement you think for this team? You know, I'm probably the wrong person to ask because I, you know, we do things in such a detailed situation where, you know, it, it, it's not like, well, we had a bad rebounding game, so so we're we're throwing in a rebounding drill or two or three. 
it's usually not that way. We work on certain things every day. And I know, you know, I, I read a long time ago, um, and, and I use this philosophy, I don't make practice, I don't drop my practice plans for the enjoyment of the players. Mm -hmm. it, it's to get better. So I think if you've asked some of the players, they'd probably say, ah, we do a lot of the same stuff over and over. And that's probably the true. We do because we're not doing it the way I want it every single time. Right. So in order to do that, you got to practice it every single day. And that's what we do. Um, so it's not always fun for them. Um, but I think they see the rewards, um, you know, so, so we emphasize rebounding, we emphasize that we have to crash, we emphasize we have to box out, do all those things in the course of some of the drills we have. Right. Well, it's practice. It's not supposed to be fun. Yeah, right? you know? exactly. So, exactly. All right. all right, Coach. Well, thanks for taking the time coming over here. I know it's a little chilly out, so we appreciate you coming over, although it will get colder for your, for your we might have to start driving over if, yeah. if you want to. But anyway, Gannon takes on Edinburgh coming up on the 16th at 530, and you can hear that on Jet Radio 1400. Coach Jim Brunelli, thanks for taking the time. Hey, appreciate you having me on, and uh, thank you very much. All right, we'll take a break. You're